Hi, and welcome to Virtual Guelph Bug Day 2020. My name's Jenny, and I'm a PhD candidate or graduate student at the University of Guelph. Last year at Bug Day, I went out and collected aquatic insects and other invertebrates from local streams and wetlands around the city and displayed them in a kiddie pool so everyone can learn more about um, the diversity of aquatic insects. This year, I thought I'd tell you a little bit more of my, about my research behind the scenes at the university, where I combine aquatic insects, DNA, and studying the environment. Many aquatic insects are actually the larva of um, adult flying insects you're probably more familiar with, like dragonflies and damselflies. Did you know that aquatic insects are really sensitive? They can tell us a lot about the condition of the water they live in. That's why they're used in so many biomonitoring programs across the country. Insects are often used to evaluate the condition of their habitat and local water quality and how by measuring how they respond to um, changes caused by uh, human activity like farming and urban sprawl. Now I'm gonna tell you uh, all about how my work goes from the field to the lab. The first step of course is collecting aquatic insects from the field. To do this, I drive out to streams in either conservation areas or on private land surrounded by farms and I collect insects from the bottom of the stream using a kick net. I also measure water chemistry using this blue probe and take measurements like water depth and habitat conditions around the stream. After I've collected all the insects, I bring them back to the lab for sorting. Now I use molecular techniques called DNA barcoding in order to identify the insects to species level. I do this because aquatic insects are, are really time consuming and often challenging to identify to species morphologically. In part, this is because of many of them are juvenile stages and they aren't fully grown yet in order for me to be able to identify them accurately. But before I can get to their DNA, I need to sort all of the bug samples and remove all of the invertebrates I'm interested in from the debris associated with sampling. So when I have a sample jar, it's usually full of uh, mud and dirt and algae and sand from the bottom of the stream. So I need to one by one pick out all of these invertebrates before I can move on to the next step. This container here on the left represents um, an entire sample. I then set the sample out to dry before I'm able to grind it using my fancy bug blender pictured in the middle. I grind in the samples so I can combine all of the bugs together so I get an accurate picture of the entire community. I then take this bug powder into a tiny tube for DNA extraction, which comes next. To start the process of DNA barcoding, I first extract the, ins uh, the DNA from the insect powder in the tube using a special buffer that causes the DNA to be released from the cells. Next comes PCR or polymerase chain reaction, uh, which is essentially copying the one um, area of DNA or gene that I'm interested in. This plate I'm holding here each well represents one single sample that used to be uh, an entire um, benthic powder. Next, I send the plate off for sequencing, which is how I am able to tell what species each insect is. See, our DNA is made up of four different components, each represented by a specific letter. The position of these letters make a code, like a barcode. 
And I'm able to use that to refer to a reference database of invertebrate sequences in order to get a species name and figure out what is living in my samples. Now, what do I do with all this data? I now have a huge amount of information about the taxonomy of the insects living in my streams, where they live, and what kind of conditions they're living. By combining field work and lab work, I'm able to get a better picture of the overall uh, biodiversity of the stream, who's living where, and what kind of habitat conditions they prefer. I hope this can be used in biomonitoring applications in order to efficiently determine um, the quality of the streams by determining which, which insects are living there. This also lets us learn more about the amazing biodiversity of insects, which as we know, scientists are learning more and more new species every year. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about my research and hope and I hope you check out the other videos on this channel.